Mark, thank you. Let's talk about Greece now. Paul Kazarian, Mark Gilbert still with us. I talked to Yanis Varoufakis guys a few days ago. He told me April, May is when he thinks the next crisis is going to sort of kick off. We'll be back. We'll be talking about Greece as an existential threat to the Eurozone. Is that right? Uh, also happy to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, first of all, you know, we have a, a minor conflict. We are large bondholders. Yeah. It's open, yep. fair disclosure. You know, the, the big issue with Giannis, the other Giannis, uh, ET, which is the current, you know, uh, Euclid, we call him ET, yep. the, current, the current, you know, finance minister, is that they're all focusing in public on debt numbers that absolutely don't make sense. No one uses future face value. It's ridiculous. Greece's debt is not 300 plus. It's really only 68. And saying they didn't get debt relief in 2015, they did. They got so much debt relief, it actually canceled out the 21.4 debt. So when Giannis talks about there's going to be another crisis, you should also ask him to please give you a copy of the paper that he distributed in Brussels, which I'm happy to do, to the Eurogroup, where he said the debt number was meaningless. It was a uh, uh, he used a sort of misunderstanding and that they should use a much lower number and that debt was sustainable. Now, that's what he distributed in private. And I have a copy. I'm happy to share it. It's actually up, I think, on one of the websites. So, you know, I don't, I mean, this, this issue of when a crisis, you know, we're not trying to sell books or get new speaking engagements, not saying that he is. Yeah. Okay, we're starting to try to new pan-European policy out of, you know, Berlin. But, uh, no. You know, for a guy who said I was a sleepy academic and then they forced me into government, since he's stopped being finance minister, he seems to be doing a lot of politics. Now, I've got a question for you, though. So, 10-year Greek yields, yeah? From 7% in November to 11% now, 3-year Greek yields from 9% to 15%. How much of that is concern about Greek's domestic situation and how much of it is just the peripheries hurting and the volatility and the sell-off? You know, from a very biased point of view, knowing the individuals, because we are people, people, having finance ministers who tell every investor who listens that the country is dead, it's on the close to death. This is Sakalotos or Varoufakis? Yeah, well, it's the current one, E.T., right. as we call him. Um, Sakalotos. You know, giving right. speeches, you can't tell investors that you're, you're, you're bankrupt when you're not. You can't answer questions, you don't even know your debt numbers. When people ask you what okay. is your debt number, Pool. you don't know it. Like, Let's it scares the numbers, people. Though. Sure, okay, so fourth quarter, Greek is back in, Greece is back in a recession, right? You, you see a global market route that's hastening the, the sell-off of Greek assets. Uh, you have pension reform plans being put, you know, again, people are questioning it. And then you have pressure from the refugee crisis. What is looking good in Greece right now? Well, what, what looks the best for us is that the numbers, like the debt hump, you've heard that a lot from ET, where he says, we have this debt hump coming in 2022. Like, they have this bump in debt. Yep. It's absolutely untrue. It was an error in Excel spreadsheet. We can show you the Excel spreadsheet. They really don't have a dump. So that's like, you look at all this stuff and it's like, yeah, but they can't manage. When it comes to the refugee crisis, they don't have management. So, you know, would you let them manage? No. And But the realization that, and I think, go ahead. Can you run an economy without a functioning banking system? No, you cannot. And you look at the real estate sector, and yeah, it's absolutely crushed. You look at the square footage that's being grown. You put a cap rate. You have them sell their real estate, for example. And you have cap rates keyed off a government bond rate that in the two-year level is like 14%. You've just destroyed your real estate industry in terms of valuation because cap rates, you know, affect valuation. And you sit back and you go, okay. Like, and you're also paying 3% on your T-bills. Everybody else pays nothing. You have 15 billion outstanding. That's like another 450 million that's just being pushed down the drain. And you look at all this and you go, okay, when are we gonna actually get a good hire in place there to change? Because it's so easy to change these but they things. Was, they were so close to doing it, it seemed, in December. There were, there, were, there were candidates' names around that they were gonna put someone in charge of basically reforming the banking system and making sure that the non-performing loans get mapped. We were told be before the government came in, within two weeks, they would adopt international accounting standards. Within two weeks. And show the real number. And actually, Dimitri Mardas, who was the former alternate finance minister, gave a very good speech and had it put in parliament that they were going to do it. And then it just stopped because that execution over that last bit, like the last 10 percent of yeah. the execution, that's the hardest. And so that and is, is that endemic to Greece? They, they always miss the last 10 percent. Yes, they can't do it. It's like any football game or you know whatever. It's no. that last little bit. They don't have the experience or judgment. But Paul, are you adding to your positions in Greece? You're the largest investor or one of the largest investors in Greece at the moment have you been adding to that in the last two months and buying what 
Um, I could not say we have not added to it. <laughs> I, 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 I could not answer that question. Um, you should be in policy. No, 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 we're speaking Greek here? Okay, no, no, I can't say that. And, you know, for, for us, the upside here, we just can't believe that, you know, if they were to announce, it's one quick question for you. If they were to announce tomorrow that they had just hired an extraordinarily capable, globally respected turnaround manager to come in and work at the country, like the first really professional hire. Yeah. Do you know what that would do to the stock yeah. price and the bond sure. prices? Yeah. It, like you'd see stock prices. Right, but who would want that job? A lot of people have. We ran this ad, full page ad in the newspapers for an executive turnaround manager. We've got droves of them and it's a pro bono position, by the way. No, there are people there and we got the key stakeholders involved. You know, the government is, you know, assisting and you know we got everybody kind of in, and, and we'll end up recommending a short list the, the impact of that would be massive here and you how can many ex-goldman on the short list there's a couple <laughs> come on answer that three more there's a couple <laughs> we, we have we have all, i'm sorry that's given i'm i'm, not, I'm stunned that everybody's surprised by that no i mean you know goldman you, you learn a couple of things you know in terms of communicating one of the great like i, I think mark carney also mentioned it or uh, uh, recently was that uh um, if you can't explain why it's meaningful, then it's not meaningful. Yeah. And that's like really important in how you communicate and you talk to your rating agencies and sovereign wealth funds. And when you have an alternate finance minister, for example, who's asked what his like, debt number is, and he says it's $340 billion, and you go, well, no. Or you ask him how much he lost on his bank stocks, for example, and you know this. 99% like of the year. And yeah. they lost like $40, 40 million and he, billion, and he goes, no, we didn't lose anything. It's like, well, how do you not lose anything? You lost when he goes, well, we don't keep a balance sheet, so we don't have to record it. Uh, uh, it's always an interesting that conversation. That makes a little sense. All right, cool, thank you.